Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a 3D Endless Runner in Unity and welcome to episode 11. In this tutorial we're going to create the countdown to start our level so we're going to go 3, 2, 1, go and we're also going to add in a fade in screen too. Don't forget, click subscribe and click on that bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So up till now we've created all of this, we've done a little bit on the canvas uh, displaying our coins and distance. So we're going to create the ability to count down to start our level. So we're going to have a little bit of a run for Timmy before he can even really do anything. So in order to really get some ground for Timmy to run on to count down, I'm going to duplicate the start section. So holding control, pressing D to duplicate and still holding control, just dragging it right here so it snaps against this section just here just needs one more there we go so that's flush together just going to move it up here and i'm actually going to get rid of some of these obstacles because i don't want timmy to really crash into them or collect them or anything like that so let's just make a clean section for timmy to run on just for now there we go that should do the trick and let's bring Timmy all the way back here. So let's take our player, if I can find him again, there he is, and bring him way back here. So if we press play, we should be able to see that Timmy has a decent amount of space to run first. So let's get to work on creating that UI to count down. And I want to use animation here as well, because I want it to kind of appear on screen and then kind of shrink out. So what we'll do is we'll go to game object, we'll go to UI and then we'll go to text. And I'm simply going to have this as three and I'm going to change the color to white. And obviously you can have any color you want at all. Uh, I'm going to double click so it kind of zooms out and I want to increase the size of my font. So I'm going to have this quite large. So let's say 70 and then we can go from there and see how it looks probably going to need it much larger than 70 but i am going to stretch it all the way across our scene just for now and let's have this as center and center and let's maybe change this to about 300 and click on game yep okay we'll go with that uh next thing what we'll do is we'll animate this to kind of illustrate a fading out look so what we'll do is I'll rename this. So let's right click and rename. Call it, uh, I'll call it three text, not test, three text. There we go. And we're gonna have a couple of versions of this. I mean, there are different ways of doing this. You could theoretically change the text value and replay the animation over and over. Uh, if you want to do that, that's absolutely fine. You know, this is just the way I'm going to do it right now. Uh, so let's now animate this. So let's go to um, down here and let's create a new folder, I'm thinking. See, if we create a new folder, it gives us a place to store various animations. So let's right click, create folder and call this animations. And in here, we're going to store the animation for this. So let's click back on our object. And let's click on animation here. If you don't have this animation tab, you'll just need to click these three little dots right here, click on add tab and then click on animation and it will appear. So to create an animation for this particular game object, we need to click create and then do a couple more things to make it, well, work. So I'm gonna call this um, count anim the reason i'm not going to call it three count anim because we're not going to create an animation for three two one and go we're just going to create one single animation that we can use so in order to get this working correctly we're going to press the record button right here to start our animation now we're only going to be using the rotation values on this which are these ones right here and if we click back on our move tool, we can see that we want to animate on the X axis. What we're gonna do is animate it so it kind of rotates by 90 degrees. In doing so, it looks like the number shrinks because we're in a 2D environment, i.e. in the canvas. So we need to set the initial keyframe, which is 
right here, so the first one, zero. And we need to have the rotation on X as zero. So if, for example, if I move this, and you can see how it moves like that, it's now turned red here. So we need to make sure that these are selected red and X is zero. So we're gonna have this display for maybe half a second and then it'll start shrinking. We can change this later on if we need to. And because we're working in 60 frames a second, we're going to have frame 30 as the next one. And we're still gonna have this as zero. So if you just move that around a little bit, so I've hovered my mouse over the X, held down left mouse button, just moved it a little bit, and then zero again. You can see that keyframes are indeed being set right here. So if we were to play this animation, absolutely nothing would change, simply because right here, it is exactly the same as right here. So now if we move to frame 60, which is at the one second mark, if we change the rotation to 90, you can see that it does still exist, but it is kind of flat. So if I now press the record button to stop that animation, head back to the project view, click on the animation itself and untick loop time in the inspector panel, it'll only play the once. So let's press play now and see how that looks. There we go. You see what I mean? It illustrates there and then it kind of looks like it thins out and disappears. That's the effect we're going for. You don't necessarily have to use the same effect I'm using, but it's just the one I used in the Timmy and Mousy game that is on Ichio. Uh, so we're going to use it right here. So next thing we're going to need to do is duplicate that. So hold control, press D. We'll change this to two text. Hold control, press D again. Change that to one text. And hold control, press D once again, and we'll have go text. And like I said, there are different ways of doing this. I'm just doing it this way to kind of illustrate things, to kind of show you that how this is working from a visual perspective rather than a coding perspective. So let's now change this, the two text to say two. Let's change the one text to say one. And let's change go text to say go with an exclamation mark, because why not? Next, let's turn off all of those four objects. So select all four and untick up here so they all disappear. We'll come back to those a little later on in this tutorial. Next thing we're going to do is create a fade in screen. So a fade in screen is basically where the screen starts completely black and then fades in to your game. Real easy to do. So let's go to game object. Let's go to UI and let's go to raw image. We want to anchor this as stretched both ways. So it's this little icon right here. Next, let's change the color to black. And once again, you don't need to have black. You can have it any color you want. Uh, next, let's set zero, 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 and zero. So it completely covers the screen. If we press play, you'll see we can't see anything. So we need to now fade this in. So I'm going to right click and rename this as fade in. And now let's create an animation. So let's make sure we're still in that animations folder. Click on animation, click create, and we'll just call this fade in as well. Save, and then click the record button once again. So I'm going to fade in over the course of one second. So my first keyframe is going to be completely black and we're only dealing with the black here. So we just need to kind of move that around. You see it flashing a little bit, all different colors. But as long as this is now set, you see the little red there. And we have this set because you can see the keyframe is set right here, right there, raw image dot color. So that's what we've done here. We set that as completely black. Also, probably worth checking that that does indeed say 255. This is the alpha, remember. This determines whether it is translucent, transparent, or opaque. We would need it to be completely opaque. So 60 frames later, which is one second, we need it to be completely transparent. So we move this down to there. And then we can stop, click on project, 
click on the fade in animation and untick loop time so it doesn't keep repeating itself over and over and over and over. We only need the animation to play just once. So if we press play now, we should see a fade in. Now that was a little bit quick. You can maybe stretch it out a little bit longer if you want to. And I'll show you how to do that just in case you do want to do that. So let's click on fade in again. Let's click on animation and let's click record once again. Now there are two ways of doing this. You can either move keyframe like that, or you can completely delete the keyframe and redo what you want. It's entirely up to you. You could move that keyframe all the way to two seconds, or you could do it this way. So frame 120, and we just need it to be completely transparent. And stop the recording, let's go back to project and press play, and it should fade in slower. There we go. So I'm not happy with that. I might do one and a half seconds. So finally, I'm gonna go back to there, press record, and I'm gonna move this now to somewhere, somewhere here. So that's one second. So we'll have it somewhere there. So that should be frame 90. So you can see that's now one half seconds. So you can see either way of changing or modifying an animation. Just make sure you do press that record button before you try modifying anything. So now it'll fade in one and a half seconds. So the next thing we need to do here to actually get all of this working is that we need to create a little script which will count down three, two, one, go. And this is gonna be a level starting script. So we're not gonna just use this script to count down. We're gonna use it for many different things to kind of keep the flow of the level going. So. Let's go to our scripts folder and let's go to environment and let's right click, create and C sharp script. We'll call this level starter. And again, as I would say, it's entirely up to you what you call it. Just remember what you do call these scripts. And let's open it up in Visual Studio. So as always, we have various different things here. By default, uh, we need to declare couple of things here. So because we are going to deal with uh, five different objects within this particular script, because we do need to turn them all off. So as later on, we can interact with the screen. Uh, let's declare those as variables. So we need public game object. And the first one is going to be the one go. So uh, sorry, three, two, one, go. And I, th I think for all intents and purposes, you could use an array if you wanted to. I guess it's entirely up to you. It's, you know, if you want to use an array, no worries. If you want to do it the long way, like I've done here, it doesn't really matter at this point because it's not that memory intensive, this game at all. So I'm just going to call this uh, three text. And you know let me start that again. So let's start this again. So game object. And we'll call it count. In fact, we'll have the lowercase here. We'll use camel casing properly. Count down three, semicolon. And then we'll have public game object count down two, semicolon. And we'll have public game object count down one. And public game object count down go. And finally, we need that fade in because although it starts and disappears, it looks like it disappears, we do still need to reference it in this script. So we're going to say public game object fade in semicolon. Now, the way all this is going to work is going to be a kind of sequence of events. Uh, we don't need to use the void update at the moment, so we're going to get rid of it, as well as the annotations. Uh, one thing we do need to create, though, is uh, a coroutine, which is an iNumerator. So we're going to start by saying uh, i enu if I can spell it, enumerator, not enumerable, i enumerator, and we'll call it uh, count sequence, open close bracket, open curly bracket. 
So the first thing we need to think of here is the sequence of events that are going to occur for all this to happen. Okay? So the first thing we want to happen is the fade screen occurs. As soon as that's disappeared, three appears. So we need to wait for 1.5 seconds. If you've got that fade screen for two seconds, you need to wait for two, one second, and so on. So yield, return, new, wait for seconds. And in brackets, 1.5 F, F because it is a float, semicolon. After that 1.5 seconds, we say countdown three dot set active true. Semicolon. So as you can imagine now, that routine happens for one whole second. So we can copy this line of code to wait and change it to wait for one second. Next, let's copy both of those lines, paste them below and change this to a two because we want two to appear and we need to wait for one second. Once again, we need to say countdown one, wait for one second. And finally, let's get rid of that line because don't need it. And this one is countdown go. So what's going to happen here is that after one and a half seconds, you can see this sequence of events. This is the reason I'm doing it this way, so we can physically see the sequence of events. Uh, three appears, we wait, then two appears, we wait, then one appears, and then we have go. Like I said, we're going to modify this a lot more in coming tutorials, but for now, this should do the trick for what we need to see. So to actually get this coroutine running, in void start, we need to say start coroutine, and in brackets, the name of that coroutine. So count, sequence, open close bracket, close bracket, semicolon, and save. So it's a very simple script in what it's trying to do, but effectively what we have done in this tutorial is create that fade in and create the countdown ability for us to do, do the actual level itself. So let's go to our level control and you can see here we have the coin collect, you know, we have different things on here, but remember we have all these scripts to control the level. So we're going to have level starter on there as well. So let's drag it across. Countdown three, let's add that variable, two, that variable, one, that variable, go, and fade in. Like I say, we haven't referenced fade in in this script, but we will be doing as we build more and more of that script. So I'm going to save my scene. There we go. Hold control, press S, and let's press play and see if this sequence works as intended. Three, two, one, go. And there we go. All good. So our countdown works as intended. So next tutorial, what we're going to do is we are going to modify that a little more. Uh, I'm thinking maybe we probably should have a font now because we don't want to stick with the default font. So let's maybe bring in a font. Uh, let's add some sound effects to that countdown. And I'm thinking we should probably start adding in the collision of obstacles so we can collect our coins but right now we can run through uh, any obstacles so like this rock for example nothing happens yeah we just go straight through it so we're going to build the ability to collide with that object so until the next tutorial thanks very much for watching